Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I thought we would do a different project than I normally do, but with a twist, I guess. I do like to do some gel printing. We are going to do that, but I thought we would do a cover for a journal. So here's what I've got so far. I've got a piece of fabric here that I want to use that I want to make as a cover for my junk journal, and I want it to be slightly larger than a sheet of eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and I like this rough edge around it, so here's what I want to do. I think what I want to do is take my scissors and rip the fabric to be the size that I want. I'll adhere these together and then we'll gel print on them. So I'm going to start by taking my scissors and making just a little snip about as far away as I think to give me a little border here. And I've got my gel plate out so I'm going to do this off over here to the side. I'm just going to take this and rip it and clean up any loose thread so they don't get on my gel plate. I already see one. All right, so now that is the width that I want it to be. I want it just a little bit of a border. So now I'm going to come down here to the bottom, make sure I don't go up too far, and I'm going to rip this one the same way. If I got it tore far enough, cut far enough. All right, so I'm just pulling the loose fibers off. The more you pull those fibers away, the more frayed that edge will look. So I'm just gonna pull a few of those fibers. All right, so I've got all the fibers pulled away pretty much. So what I wanna do, just to help with stability of this fabric for gel printing, I'm gonna take this piece of cardstock and just lightly glue it down. I will be sewing on it after we gel print because I don't want paint on my stitches. So we're gonna glue this down with just Aline's Tacky Glue. So let me, just for sakes of having some stability, we're gonna glue this down. And this is just a piece of cardstock. It's linen cardstock that I have in my stash. And I'm just putting it in the center of this fabric rectangle. The fabric that I'm using happens to be a canvas. You could use what they might call as duck cloth. You could use muslin. Just any fabric really that has a nice texture to it and that we'll be able to uh, see the paint. So if you have a dark color, you may have to apply a lot of paint in order to cover it up. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside for just a moment and then let's do some gel printing. I've got a 12 by 12 gel plate here and I'm going to position my stencil. I wanna see how I wanna do this. I wanna position my stencil somewhat in the middle here only because when I go to gel print, I want a little bit of a border around here so that I get paint over all of the fabric when I'm done. And I've got my new flower mandala. Maybe, you know, you just like mandalas just a little bit. And I thought this would be a pretty one. And I want to color these flowers individually just a little bit with some different colors. So I've got a tray and I've got some paint daubers in that these are the Distress Ink tools. And I've put one of the sponges on there and I'll grab some paint. So I want to start, let's start in the middle with, let's do a pink. So I'm going to put a little bit of pink paint in my palette. I'm going to use my little dauber and pick up some paint and kind of use it to smooth it out a little bit. I don't want it super thick. I just want enough. So I'm just going to come in here and kind of pat it onto my stencil. And I'm going to keep doing that in all of the centers of these flowers. All right, I'll clean off my dauber. I've got a scrap of paper here by just pressing my dauber onto that till there's not any more paint coming off. You could dip this into water, but I don't want to get it wet because I want to use it again. So I'm just going to keep pouncing it onto the paper until it's somewhat clean. All right, so I want to go around that outside edge. So how about if we use a little bit of a purple? So I've got Hyacin. The other one was called Vivid Pink, and I'm just using Anita's all-purpose paint. It's a craft paint. This works just fine on gel printing. So I'm just gonna grab some of that purple paint and go right around that edge here. 
And again, I'll clean my dauber off because I want to change colors and just again. again. All right, this time I think I want, I've kind of got a, what is this? Island blue. It's kind of a turquoisey teal color. So I'll put a bit of that in here. And we're just going to go all the way around the medalla, mandala, mandala. See, my husband and I, keep, he keeps telling me how to say it, and I can't get my tongue to say it correctly. So please forgive me if I'm butchering how to say mandala <laughs> or mandala. Maybe that's the way. I keep saying it wrong, and so he's like, this way. I had the same problem when I was a kid. I couldn't say sausage or cinnamon or aluminum and my best friend kept working with me forever until I could say it <laughs> get a little bit more paint all right I'll clean my dauber off again since I know I'm done I could just pop this in some water but I want to clean it off a little bit before I do that all right so I'm just going to pop that into my water and kind of daub it around And then I'll just use a towel to clean it off just a little bit. All right, so I've still got paint around this outside edge. So I'm grabbing a paper towel and dipping it in a little bit of water. And what I want to do is just clean up on this outside edge any paint that went beyond the stencil. I'm just kind of wiping that down. Now I could have put a piece of paper, you know, attached it with some washi tape. To make sure that I didn't go beyond my stencil. That's another way if you don't want to take the time to clean off your gel plate. All right. So now I'm going to lift this stencil and let this paint dry. I see a couple places I need to clean. So I'm going to use my wet paper towel and kind of come in here and clean just a little bit. I'll let this dry completely. I do not want any of this paint wet when I go to put the next layer on. So I'm going to turn off the camera and let that dry. And once it does, I'll be right back. The paint is dry and sitting here thinking about how I want to do this. I don't want a whole bunch of paint on the outside. I want just enough to cover the fabric. And I want to be able to position it because sometimes if you cover the whole plate, you don't know if you've got it in the right spot. So here's what I've done. I'm going to create a mask. And how I've done that is I've picked up some scrapbook paper. This was some leftover from a project and cut it to about an inch and a half. And I thought of what I would do is just position this so that it is just a little bit of a border around the stencil designs. So I'm just going to come down here. I mean, I'm going to do the bottom first, do this piece first. So in theory, when I lay down my fabric, I'm going to look at this. It should be pretty close that these edges won't get paint on them. Make sense? All right, so what I need to do now is colorize this background so we're not just putting it on the white fabric and that's all we see. So I've got a couple of colors of, of paint. I've got citrus and i've got what is this one sunshine yellow and then i've got some cream so what i'll do is put down a little bit of this you want to open your paint away from your gel plate so you don't end up with crusty bits falling off and i'm going to put a little bit of paint and then a little bit of the green Make sure i'm not getting a little crusty bits I'm going to put the cream down in a moment. First, I want to kind of brayer out these colors a little bit. And I may not need the cream. I think I'm just going to go with the green and the yellow. I wasn't sure if I put enough paint down. So I'm just going to brayer where the areas is that was open on the gel plate. I'll clean off my brayer if I got too much paint and just kind of keep going. All right, I'm going to quickly peel off these pieces so I don't get paint on my fabric where I don't want it. Then I'm going to grab my cardstock cover, and this is the fabric side, and this is the cards, the cardstock side on this side. I'm just kind of lining this up as best as I can see. I'm placing that down. Because I took up that outer edge, I'm not going to get paint on the inside. So I just want to rub this really well to get that paint to adhere to the fabric. All right, I'm going to test it to see if it's coming up. 
it is, but I'm going to give it a little bit more of a rub. Well, it didn't come up like I want it to, so I'm trying to decide what I want to do. I think what I want to do to reactivate that paint is I'm going to put down another layer, and I like the way that green looks. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of cheat. I'm going to put a little bit of this paint back down and try to brayer it only. I just added a little bit more paint on the other side. I think I should have used a different paint because the acrylic paint dries so quickly, this craft paint, and if I'd used a heavy body paint, it would stick better to fabric. Well, it isn't perfect, but I like it. So I'm going to let this dry, and I'll be right back. So even though my gel print didn't turn out perfect, I still like it. I, again, I think if I would have used a heavy body paint, let me show you what I mean by that. The heavier body acrylic paint, this one is Master's Touch, is a little bit thicker and it doesn't dry as quickly. And so it would have set up a little better. You know, sometimes you have to learn. So that's why I went ahead and shared it with you so that you would know. Use a heavier paint if you're going to use it on fabric. All right. So on this side, it is dark white. And I've got my mandelas with dots so this is a mandela with dots and i want to line this up with my page i've got some washi tape here so i'm just going to washi tape it so it doesn't move on me as i use some distress oxide all right so i've got some distress oxide out here i've got mermaid lagoon picked raspberry and dusty concord and i've just got some blending brushes so i want to grab some i think one of these is a little wet all right, so I'm going to grab my, I want, I think I want the, I'm trying to figure out what order I want to put this in. Yep, I think I like that. So I'm going to do the picked raspberry first. So I'm just going to grab some of that ink and start in the middle. And then let's do the dusty concord. And then I've got mermaid lagoon. And let's peel this up. I reuse my washi tape. I've got a little plastic drawer over here to the side that I stick it to. All right, so there is what it looks like with that stenciled on there. Do you like it? I think it turned out pretty good. All right, so now what I want to do is, why is my screen? There we go. All right, so now what I want to do is, I think I want to add just a little bit of color on this outside edge. So let's pick a different color. I've got bundled sage since we have the green on the outside just grab a little bit of this green on for the inside and just kind of blend it around the edges and I think I like that so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I want to stitch around this outside edge just to give it a decorative stitch so let's head over to the sewing machine I've got my sewing machine set to do a zigzag stitch, and mine's electronic, so I've got it on a two and a two. So it'll make a narrow zigzag stitch. I'm using regular thread, regular needle. I've got black in my upper thread and black in the bottom thread. And I'll just start down one side and then stitch all the way around. And I think I'm going to turn it over and stitch on the paper side so that I can see where my stitch line is going to line up with that outside itch. When I get to the end, I leave my needle down and I'll raise my presser foot and then rotate my paper around and then I can start sewing down this edge. All right, let's go back to the work table. All right, so I've stitched around the edge. You can see how that's come together. And I'll go ahead and line up the cardstock inner portion kind of match that and let's fold this in half let's put a journal together I've already got some pages made so let me grab those and we'll put this together I've got a few pages that I printed from the Mandela kit uh, I've got a few pages that I printed from the Mandela kit from Calico collage and I think what I want to do is just look through these really fast at the different patterns 
and maybe maybe this one for the inside cover just because it's bright or do I want this one let's see I think I want this one so that's gonna be my first page and then let me show you some of the other pages I made I just kind of made two at a time because I wanted a quick way to put this journal together this was a book page that I took some of these tear off notepads and put down I used the Bombay stamp set to stamp this is the stitches stamp set with the little flowers and then these were some of those tear off notepads so let's see maybe right there this was just some scrapbook paper that I had in my stash and I used the diamond with flare stencil on the inside and I used the memories are timeless treasure of the heart not all who wander are lost I had some cards that I made a while back that I used. I also used from the textured edges around the edges there a couple little mixed media cards so I got a couple of those pages this was using some composition notebook and the same stencil we used on the outside and I used the different words I'll have a link down below of all the products that I use and made some mixed media backgrounds by using some tattered angels and rubber stamping on some book pages and I've got two of those I think I'll put maybe a page like there I don't know I'm gonna kind of work this out to see how I want this to come together and then I made a book page so this was a page out of a Bible as the background I scraped with an old gift card some acrylic paint in the background and then I used a paintbrush and washed the page with some tattered angels glimmer mist then used the stitches stamp set celebrate the journey use the Bombay stamp set to make a little pocket and stamped element this was a book page that I adhered to another piece of paper so it's not super thick but it's all mixed media here use the same stencil that we used on the inside and then use a gel print across the top and I've got two of those pages I have this mixed media a Franken page that I made a while back and I just added a couple of the images from the mandala kit inside I think I'll make that my center and now I'm gonna look at this I want that to there like that I think that'll work to kind of give me a good balance so I'm gonna grab my cover and open that up and then grab a journal page and I'll just keep stacking these together until I have all the pages I'll grab my book binding tools and let's bind this journal I'll use a pamphlet stitch so I'm gonna make sure that all my pages are centered especially since I've got these smaller pages in the center here kind of find where those are all right and I'll just use these big paper clips you can use binder clips whatever you can to hold all your pages together I've got a little template that I've made I'll put that down in the center I've got a piece of fun foam here and then I've got the Tim Holtz craft pick so I'll just go right through the hole there here and I'm making sure my book is in a V so that it goes right through that center port I'll use some wax linen thread I want three times the height of my journal so one two and three grab my scissors and then I have a book binders needle this is a needle that is narrow so it's not super wide it's sturdy and it's not much bigger than the Tim Holtz craft pick so whenever you're binding a journal you don't want a huge hole because then your journal will get wonky so I'm just doing a three hole pamphlet stitch I went from the center to the outside back to the top hole in this case I want to pull this thread up out of the way and make sure that I don't have any extra loops I'm gonna go back through the center hole to the outside and then we'll come up this last hole here 
And then what I like to do is take this one and go under that first stitch up here. And then we're going to pull these in opposite directions and make sure that it is tight on the inside and the outside. And we'll tie this off. I'll cut off the excess. I may leave a little bit in case I want to put a charm or something on it later. Put all my tools back into my junk journal tools and so I can find them later. I don't think I want to put anything on the cover. I think I'm going to leave it like it is. But here's a quick flip through of my journal. So here's the cover that we made. And then here's the inside with the mandala and kind of texturizing it using some of the printed kit, scrapbook paper, using stencils and rubber stamps to decorate my pages. I kind of like it. A little bit of variety of texture using the mixed media pages. Lots of writing space. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on gel printing on fabric. And even though it didn't come out perfect, maybe you learned something to be able to gel print on fabric yourself. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Do come back on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time as I do a live stream showing how to make a complete journal. So I would show how to make the pages in this type of a journal. On Thursdays, I have recorded videos. So you want to come hang out with us and chat while we do a live premiere. And again, I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch, and I hope you're inspired to create. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Again, I hope you enjoyed seeing this quick tutorial and are inspired to make your own junk journal. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a fabulous day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.